You know yeah. what? I wanted to talk to you also about your rock. Now you sent me some pictures, so go ahead and tell people so they understand what it is, and then yeah, I'm yeah. gonna pull up the pictures for you, okay? Yeah, and then I sent you those videos too, although they're not the best. You know, um, I, I was so happy and lucky to, you know, I just so happened to be with a friend that I had showed it to. And he was like, man, I found it so weird that he's like, I, I took a video of it. But, you know, I hate to say it, he wasn't stroking it the right way for it to do wild stuff. But, I mean, it was still there. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I wanted to yeah. bring it up because it, it ties in to what we're doing and it, it created a field around it. So, let me... I'm pulling it up right now. Okay, this is right here. Can everybody see it? Yeah. This is the rock right here. Here's one side of it. I'm going to go yep. ahead. You could see. Yeah, and you could. Go ahead. Yeah, you could see how it's like, um, you know, crystallized, like crusted on the outside. And that was really solid, you know, and then there's portions of it too. But in this particular bit, you could see it's, it's really porous, you know, and that was the, to me that that definitely had cme effect you know um to to a certain degree and uh definitely interfered with it um yeah that that's that kind of um shows some of like the flow and the crystallization structure on the outside you know of the white crystals but yeah. as i described before you know the green kind of has this flow um pattern to however it solidified and crystallized you know and you can kind of see that there um so that's just a, a sphere that i had cut with a diamond bit and that thing was unruly <laughs> <laughs> that was that thing was unruly <laughs> that's the one that gave you all the trouble or what oh i i mean that thing gave me so much trouble because i mean just keeping it in my hand while i was trying to get it into something spherical was difficult it wasn't all that big i think it was um i don't know like half inch or something like that you know half inch uh, diameter sphere gotcha. but you know um but I, I mean like i said it was friggin' unruly that thing it if you dropped it it would just decide to roll and stop and then you touch it and then it would roll again and yeah weird stuff with that but it was uh, the, the, you could see the inclusions in there too and even though it looks like it's like an iron or something that that's in there, I I don't think it was because that was um it was actually trans translucent um like amber colored crystals. It wasn't like iron oxide rust. Yeah, because it, it looks like it's like um, uh, copper and that it's coated is what it kind of looks like for when you first start looking at it until you start seeing some of the clear start showing up. And you can mm -hmm. start to see some of the sparkling going on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the newer photos that I sent you today, you'll see uh, some of that really apparent, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, hold on. we got one more. This was, it looks like your cores you were cutting out of this. Yeah. So that was uh, the main piece that I was cutting, Um, you know, uh, all the cores out of. And um, I had, uh, you know, run it, uh, soaked it in some acid for a little bit to see if I could get some of the calcium off of it. It got all the calcium out of it, took a little time, um, you know, and uh, that process actually increased its reactivity because um, at that point, I think that any crevice that had the calcium deposit in it was then hollowed out. Gotcha. Yeah. Huh. Let's take a look. Here we go. Here's one of yeah, so this is my friend messing with it. He's dropping it from like less than an inch. And it's just spinning around and flipping itself onto other sides and, you know, as like pole shifts. Huh. Now, That's the crazy. fact that it's on a piece of metal is nothing. You know, like um, he could have done it on the table. It would have done the same exact thing. Um. I was originally showing him um, a couple of pieces on that piece of metal and, you know, showing him how, how that piece that, that metal lid, even though it's plastic coated at the bottom, it would actually lock to the table when you had friction of the rocks on top of it. That's cool. Let's look at, we got another one. Let's see what this one. Yeah. It, it kind of acts like a, like a magnet in a way. 
You, you yeah, can but, see it pulling. It's yeah. Pulling. Mm -hmm. You saw it spin right there, you know, it's like, but it doesn't like if you were to reorient it, it doesn't want to find that same pull that it was pulling to. It's always changing. <laughs> oh, man, that's really cool. Yeah, right, we got some other. Let's take a look. Yeah, so that that piece was that that piece was hot. <laughs> it was hot. That, that's is that the same one we we're looking at just a minute ago? Uh, it might be. It might be. I think it might have been. Yeah. I'm trying to see if there's anything in that, any kind of different colors or things. It I mean, it's all different greens and white, and then there's like a metallic sheen to some of the uh, crystallization on the top. Yeah. It almost looks like there's a little bit of gold in the center there, or is that copper looking? Or I, I can't really tell which one it is. I think that the metallic silvery okay. is, um, is a zinc component or magnesium zinc okay. component. Um, and then the, you know, it's green. It definitely is very high in copper. Um, you know, the, I think that that's where the green's coming from there. Let's take a look. And then, so oh, here's more of a green on this. You can see this. Yeah, that's the same exact piece. Yeah, but you're still getting that copper in there. That, that It's like a brown line or copper. Or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that that's all like crystallization. So where it's... It's solid white is just solid like quartz crystal, right? Oh. Where it's like kind of off white, you know, at the top and the side piece, like yeah. how that's going. Those are all cr like actual miniature crystals. They're lined up. It's it's insane. Very very close, almost like hair, right? Like my fingers are, except all in bundles. So if you look at it, like, well, where's my camera? I can never do this like that. That's how those crystals are, that close like that. Nice. You know? And they, right, they, they're they long, and they actually bind together sort of like hair. But it's not like an asbestos. Yeah. Yeah, this thing's definitely wild. It's definitely cavernous. You can see that now. I couldn't oh, see yeah. it the last time. Yeah, I definitely see it in there now. Yep. That's where those crystal structures were growing in the pockets. So there's a pocket in in the formation, and then the crystals would be growing toward each other, like that. Yeah. And there's still gaps all over the place. So if you think about the elytra of the of the beetle, the beetle elytra, you know, under a microscope, you have this structure that's like this, you know, where it's like pinpoints in and pinpoints out at each other creating these you know super fine um you know pockets where you know they, they were saying like if you if you if you were to take like a cone you know if you imagine and you stick the piece of cone into a into the clay you know the tip of the cone you know you're gonna have like a round cylindrical um depression you know that that comes to a point right so if you did that a bunch of times, but then you flip the clay over and you did the same exact thing on the other side, now you have like, um, uh, I, I don't know, there's nothing really like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's what the uh, elytra are like, you know, and that's why it has so many caverns in every single direction, all coming in, and having this large surface area at the top, but then diffusing down to a small surface area at the bottom, creating that effect. You know, and that's the same thing that you see in that little tiny cavern running across the top. It's got these pointed crystals facing at each other like that. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so what's this one here? Is that the same? That's got to be a different one, right? That's, um, I mean, it's the same rock, but it's just the bigger piece, um, different lighting. I, I had um, regular white light, but I also had a UV light on it, too. Because this one, I could see more of the silver deposit, like you were talking about earlier. Yeah, it's it was metallic in certain lighting conditions. Um, under magnification, those crystals, um, they they were transparent, but um, they 
they had a metallic sheen to them. Somebody asked uh, on a question, and I think you answered them already on the last video we did. You're going to get these things tested. I only have a couple of fragments left of it, unfortunately. Um, and I'm willing to send send out the little pieces that I have. Um, but I, I could tell tell you, as a matter of fact, that the small pieces that I have, um, you know, they they don't have the same reactivity as these larger pieces did. Okay. Like, you know, they it's not that they don't do anything, you know, but they, they definitely aren't as um, reactive. Um, I don't know if that's, um, you know, because maybe some of the compound elements are absent in them and they're not cavernous or whatever, or if, um, you know, maybe the crystal lattice structure of it isn't large enough for it to have the objective interactions but I'm, I'm willing to have anybody that wants to look at them that has the proper equipment to do so you know um you know they could they could definitely take a look yeah we're talking about geometry and stuff and this would be a perfect example if it was producing it based on the geometry of the caverns and stuff like that and the crystals that would make perfect sense yeah let's take a look we got i think we got a couple more yeah There's a couple more one yeah <laughs> and that like like i said i mean you know sometimes like under certain you know levels of excitement it would become more green <laughs> you know like like i i really had that thing aggravated with other pieces of smaller bits of it underneath it i was shaking it around and stuff and that's the color that it decided that it was going to change <laughs> you know, so that same silver white mass that you saw before is the same as that glowy green thing. So it's, it's kind of like one of those little mood stones you get, and it keeps changing color based on what you're doing or whatever you touch it. That's cool. Yeah, but it's not based on your mood. It's based on its mood. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that about this. Yeah. It's got a mind of its own. Yeah, and there it was before. You know, in the same exact scenario before I started shaking it around and whatnot. So hold on, that is the same as this. Before you started shaking it, it was this color. Yeah, I darkened the photo up a little bit, though, because, you know, seeing the color difference in person was easier okay. than it was in the photograph. But that's objectively the, the difference between point A and B. But I, I did darken that photo up. Okay. Yeah, because it looks like a piece of silver right there, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like a piece of ore or something. You know, it's definitely an ore-type mineral, you know? Yeah. Which would make it easier to, to do things with, you know what I mean? And you can see mm -hmm. why. Look at that. Now, that's a lot better picture of that one right there. Yeah. And that's under normal lighting, and you can see how much greener it is, too, just in that scenario. Yeah, and it wasn't like it was it, this thing was extremely difficult to photograph. Like, I don't know if it's because of the static discharge that it had going off and whatnot, but my camera would not focus even under manual focus and whatnot. It would focus on certain parts and not others. And the it, if the lighting was off a little bit, it would just be a blur. And it, the thing was a huge pain in the ass. I would yeah. expect it to be if it's putting off static electricity. I get that yeah. a lot in here with camera problems. You don't know how many times you got to reshoot something just to get the photo right. I don't doubt it at all. I mean, it was uh, as soon as it was gone, I was taking pictures of rocks again like it was no problem. <laughs> you know, but not just not it. <laughs> it didn't want to be photographed. So, so cool. Yeah, no, it was it was a neat experience. I'm happy and privileged to have had it. You know, and um. I think it opened my mind to a whole other realm of things, you know, like uh, as far as like look, interest in research is concerned, you know. Well, I know uh, Mike Faraday is working on uh, batteries that are basically solid state. They just have one plate next to the other, next to the other one, and mm -hmm. they're creating energy out of it. So 
the fact that this thing has so many different things in it and different minerals in it, I don't doubt at all that it's creating energy. And the fact is, even when you create energy, if you have anything in it that's crystalline, you're going to start to get a field because that will create a magnetic field in some areas. And this might, might not be stable in where it's creating the magnetic field. It may shift all the time, which it sounds like it's doing, is the energies in one place, but the magnetic fields keep shifting on it. You know what? Uh, I do think it's interesting, though, because when you start creating static electricity out of a rock, it kind of gives you different understandings. Like, you know, they, they talked about in Japan, they, they, they have this rock that they always show on uh, ancient aliens, and they said it was floating around and stuff. It kind of gives you hope <laughs> for something like that. You're like, yeah, let's see it. You know what I mean? If you got energy producing in a rock and it creates fields, I mean, why not? Or there's certain yeah. rocks, certain rocks that looks like they defy gravity. Well, there might be a reason for that now. You know what I mean? They talk about the area it's in. It might just be that you know what I mean. Something inside the rock as well. Yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, I I'm a personal believer in that. The once this end of it's figured out, you know the the how it works, and that's. We know, you know, actually getting the system to be controllable, to be reliable, to be whatever. I think the the clear evolution of that would be, well, it's not going to be wrapping coils and all this anymore. Now it's going to be, okay, well, now how do we make a compound system of this? That's where the material science end of it comes in, you know. Um, that's where the 3D printing aspect of it comes in and things like that. You know, when you could sit there and 3D print different materials layer by layer in certain configurations, you know, you could, you don't have to have copper wire, you know, or whatever. You could have 3D printed copper, you know, connections like a circuit board, for instance, you know, in whatever the optimal shape is. So if it's not round, although it probably is. <laughs> you know it probably is you know but like if it's not round for instance it could just be another shape or if um certain inclusions you know of other materials within a bigger structure might enhance the effect or give additional controllability or something like that well you could do that you know you could have different materials just basically coming out of a cylinder and now this cylinder is what does the job you know, and that cylinder is a compound of all these different, th you know, the, the coils, the, the conductors, the, the semiconductors, the, you, you know, all, all the materials all in one that serves that single function. And I think that that's ultimately where it would go. And what's different than that in the rock? That's what, and that's what I'm saying. You know, tie it together. What's different than that in the rock? The rock just did it naturally, and it was a, maybe a fluke that all of these different elements came together under the right conditions that it exhibits some of these types of attributes. You perfect those attributes, and then you make the rock. Yeah. And now but it's now you know. It tells you a lot about based on what the effects are, what it's actually doing. So when you say yeah. it has static effects, you know that static has to be part about it. It has magnetic effects. You know that magne magnetism has to be part of it. You know, you can't discount anything. No, know? not at all. No. You but but they are all related. They are yeah. all related, you know, phenomena. It's, you know, what kind of what it comes down to. Moon rock. <laughs> I don't know if it's yeah. like that. You know I don't know I mean? where it's from, man. <laughs> Yeah, it showed up. That's so cool. Yeah. All right, man. You know what? We got uh, Ben's going to be starting his stream soon, so I want to go over and watch. He's building one of those rod and coils. You ever looked into one of those and building that? Um, I've definitely looked into them. Um, I have not built them. Uh, yeah, I want you to get over there. Two, two quick things to report before it falls off my mind. I was playing with my little um, frequency, you know, generator coil. Yeah you know that i was showing you the other day and i didn't have a lot of power going through it and i think i was running it at like 900 something hertz right yo it gave me uv burn <laughs> so <laughs> gotta be gotta be careful with that you know um yeah it i actually was like i had it maybe six inches for my head and it sh straight up burned like oh. me right there <laughs> yeah yeah so i'll do that again <laughs> yeah you gotta be careful
with that. And then the the only other thing that I was playing with was um, a similar type of coil that um, I don't want to grab it. Right here. It's really sloppy. I have no money and I have no uninsulated coil. But I was trying to figure out the center point knot. That's the main thing that I was trying to figure out is to get these to loop in in the way that's going to maybe expand that center point as much as possible. That's what I was interested in, in playing with. So I haven't done anything with this yet. I'm still fiddling with it. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I know. Nothing crazy. Everybody, like I said, I'm I'm the community idiot. <laughs> let me toy. <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have to let me know when you put an energy through it what it actually does. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm curious myself, and um, I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, see how it goes. And uh, yeah, tell Ben I said hello. Mm. Why not? Thank you All for right, coming on, Joe. Really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. No, for thank, coming you. thank you for having me. I love this. It's great. Really. Yep. Not a problem, man. We'll have to do it again. Catch you later, Nathan. All right. See you guys all later. Bye.